Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And David, on this week's Riff, what are we going to talk about? This. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, we let's, have, let's pick it up. Look it, at that. It's a two-man lift. It is. Look at this bad boy. Yeah. It's a new acoustic dimension. It certainly is. Lovely. It's, a, it's an old new acoustic dimension. An old new, yes. Yeah. We did a riff so. on a, a NAD amp before, didn't we? Did. we? Yeah. Um, and it was it was really well received. We yeah. had lots and lots of uh, lots of love for the NAD. Yes, uh, and you know, which is quite right and proper, really. I mean, what's not yeah. to like? It's a it's a gorgeous piece of kit, isn't it? I, and I've a always, heavy one. It is a heavy <laughs> one. Do you know? I've always been a big fan, though. Yeah. I always think, thought they made really cracking amplifiers. These yes. are these are made in Japan, aren't they? Well, this one is. Yeah. So this is the uh, the sort of secret that. Uh, you know, dare not speak its name in a way. So um, the funny story about the um, uh, 3155, which is what this is, yeah. um, is that it's it's kind of styled like the cheaper entry level um, 3130, okay. which was, so we're back in 1985 now. Yes, yeah. Um, and um, you'd be on your Kawasaki 404. I would have been, yeah. And yeah, I'd probably I would. still be on my Honda 250 Super Dream. Yes, well remembered. I think, yes. Um, and yeah. um, did, we, did, I have, did I buy your XL185 from you, you did. by then? And yeah, you were on a track and I, bike, did you had? Uh, I didn't then. Oh, I right. just had my okay. 404 at the time. Didn't you have a, a DT400 at one point? Oh, I, I did. That was a little bit after. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. viewers. We yeah. just. Um, yeah. I, I, I couldn't start it. I wasn't strong enough. Yes. Was, I remember. It was a massive two stroke, yeah. which just was. Yeah. It would leave you a big bruise on your foot. Yeah. So, speaking of bruises. Yes. This is quite a bruise of an amp, isn't it? It actually? is. Yeah. So, so sorry about that brief uh, motorcycling diversion. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, basically, 1985. Um, and the three, the thirty twenty NAD um, is king, isn't it? Yes. Um, so yeah. it's just co coming to the end of its life in a way, and it's just being replaced by the three one thirty. Um, but uh, little did most people know that they made a high end version of the three one thirty, which is this. Yes. And um, the the funny thing is, is that this high end version, uh, which sold for two hundred ninety pounds. Whereas the three one thirty was one hundred and thirty nine, I think. Um, this has got a metal fascia, um, which has been painted. Are you, sh are you sure? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. It's been painted to look like the plastic fascia it's on the cheap mad. ones. It's just mad. So yeah, normally you'd uh, why? <laughs> well, normally you try and make the cheap ones look expensive. But it, it, this is like the expensive one. They try to make look cheap. Yes. Um, yeah. And um, so it's an all metal amp. It's an uh, alloy fascia which has been painted NAD Battleship Grey, hasn't it? Yeah. Or whatever, yeah. It, whatever the colour is. Yes. Um, with a pressed steel um, uh, case as, as ever. And it's got a few extra little uh, gizmos on the front, which it we'll it has. discuss uh, later. We've got to, um, it's actually it's interesting. We've got, we've got tone controls yeah. on this, but it doesn't look like you can bypass them. Is that right? I think uh, you've got. Um, I think you're. Uh, what have we got here? Got uh, some loudness yeah. stuff. I think yeah, they, they're supposed to be bypassed when they're in the middle, but I'm not sure. Uh, is if that that's right? Okay. True or not? Interesting. But um, the point is, is that um, this is um, uh, basically made in Japan, whereas the cheaper nads were made in Taiwan. Right. Um, okay. So, um, okay. So everyone these days thinks, oh, it's very modern to make stuff in China, etc. Um, and um, but uh, NAD were doing it from NAD NAD. I'm never sure which to call them. Um, they were doing it since the early seventies. So um, they were make manufacturing in Taiwan, uh, which is the Republic of China as opposed to the People's Republic of China, okay. which is um, what most people think of as China. Just so. a quick history lesson there. Yeah. Just so uh, well, the thing is, we we've got Taiwanese viewers, Mike. They get very annoyed if okay. Uh, okay. we say Taiwan is China. Very good. But then very again, good. maybe we have Chinese viewers who get very annoyed if we say Taiwan isn't China. So we also have viewers who get very annoyed if we don't show the sockets. Yes. And I'm well, one of them. That's much more important. It is. Let's turn Sorry. it around. So you got him. Yeah. It is a beast, actually. Uh, it's a big old bit of kit, awesome. isn't it? 
Look at this. We yeah. should probably mind the. So old. Mike can talk us through the software. Yeah, we've got we've got a ton here, a ton of connectivity. Um, there's actually a couple of things here which I really like. Um, I love the fact that it's got this variable phono stage. Yeah. Um, so you can choose which sort of to, to suit your cartridge. So there's it's, it, which is over this side. Yeah. yeah. And and also um, we can um, we can choose a sort of to be compliant with our speakers. Yes. Can't we? So we can if you've got sort of really hard loads to drive, there's a little switch at the back. You can you, a, you can vary the it's got an impedance switch. It has I think vary the impedance, yeah. There. So Exactly. And that will switch between four and eight ohms and optimize the power amp section. It's soft clipping, which most NADs yeah. had. Thirty one twenty had that, didn't it? So soft clipping. So sounds better with it off. Always. But um it saved millions of student loudspeakers yes, in yes, the early eighties. At, at parties. Yeah. Yeah, so, I remember um, you turning it on when we had when we had parties. Yes. In case anyone blew your Absolutely. your speakers up at the time. Yeah. Your Dior fours, I think. Yes. You're not blowing my speakers up. I've switched my soft clipping. Exactly, on. matey. So, yeah, but it um, sounded worse with it on. But who cares? And then you've got this sort of bridge switch. Yeah. So, so this is the clever bit down here. Yeah. So okay, and uh, that will uh, turn the uh, the amplifier into a fire breathing monster when you add. A two one five five um, power amp, which matches this perfectly, and I'll yes, I'll, I'll uh, give you a picture, Mike, to upload. Okay, okay, and, um, and some proper grunt then. Yes, some proper proper so grunt. I think it's supposed to be one hundred and fifty watts bridged. So the standard power is, I think, fifty five watts. I'll just um, uh, just find out uh, what the exact um, details are. I've just made a note on my computer. Uh, but uh, there we go. Yeah, two what two times fifty five watts RMS per channel standard as as a thirty one fifty five. Yeah. And um, but you hit the bridge and you stick another two one five five power amp on, um, and it will then give you one hundred fifty watts RMS into eight ohms, and twice that into four and twice that into two allegedly. Yeah. And God only knows what uh, after that. So basically, sure, it makes it a, sure. lot, a lot more. Punchy and powerful, yes. Um, and those NAD watts were always pretty chunky watts. They anyway, always were. They, they yeah. always were not like sort of some of the other amp watts which yeah. we get. But but also you can have this as a dedicated preamp or a dedicated yes. power amp, can't you? Yeah. Because like many NADs, you can sort of bridge between the preamp and the yeah. power amp, power amp stage, can't it's you? Got a, yeah, it's got a, yes. um, And I can see you've been using this um, as a preamp, I would imagine. Yeah. Which is why you've uh, you don't have your little sort of jumper leads in. Exactly. So. It's got a preamp. Pre out, so I was using it as preamp. Very cool. It's got a very good phono stage. Yeah, I bet so, it has actually. Yeah. yeah, I bet it has. Um, am I allowed to ask the the million dollar question? Yes. So, in fact, let me go. Let me go two. Let me ask you two questions. One, where did you get it from? Yeah. Is this a, is this sort of a, 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 a joyful eBay bargain? It is. Uh, many years ago. Okay. Okay. Um, and um, my follow up question is: Is it completely standard? No. <laughs> <laughs> So, but I'll, can I answer your first well, question? Please do, first? please do. So, um, yeah, so the, the the cunning thing about if you're buying secondhand NAD 3020s on eBay, they're always between about 100 and 200 quid, roughly. Yes. Maybe 250 if you've got an absolute minter. Um, and then the 3130s, which are the 3020 replacements, are roughly the same ish. So, um, and arguably, I think the 3020s sound better than the 3130s, um, but it's just, you know, it's not by much. And, um, uh, but here's the weird thing. The 3155s like this don't, aren't much more expensive right. than 3130s. So 250 quid-ish to maybe 300 tops. Um, and sure. uh, that's a hell of a, hell of a bargain. Yes. Um, yeah. So basically, you can get it's this. It's a big thumper of an yeah, amp, isn't it? It is. So you get this really nice, kind of super mega, um, sort of uber nad, basically, of the first generation for not much more money than a standard one. So that's the uh, that's the trick. Um, and there's also a company on. <laughs> a giant nad. Yes. It doesn't sound rude at all, does no. it? No. No. No, well, n not not to normal not, people, not to us, Mike, who who, who have innocent minds. <laughs> yes, yes, it's <laughs> so, an album. Um, yes, <laughs> and don't start giggling like an eight-year-old when there's a double entendre like you read in a Viz magazine. 
Anyway, as I say before, I so rudely interrupted Sorry. by uh, giant nads. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, so yeah, um, the, there are there is a big movement these days in uh, recapping these things, and there's um, there are several companies. One of which um, is called Amplifier Repair Services. Uh, would you like to? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah. I've got it already. No, okay. not, I've just done my nad joke. I'm not going right. to do another joke based on amplifier repair services. Okay, well, uh, the acronym is there if you if you want to. Yes, quite. Um, Thank you. But um, it, 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 this company um, advertises. Well, you can get find it on Google, and they they do nads. They they basically uh, recap them and do a fantastic job. And I had this done with fancy, expensive capacitors. There's and a few in there. Bits and pieces. I think there's yeah, there's like thirty or forty or something like wow. that. Wow, cool. Um, like far too many. Uh, and um, so you sort of bought it for yeah. sort of eBay, eBay bargain, then spent yeah. a million pounds on it. Yeah, I mean it was only a couple of hundred quid, I think, um, to sure. to get it supercharged. And I got the. Um, uh, you the, must know someone from Amplifier <laughs> Repair Services. Yes. Well, um, uh, would that be uh, the owner of Amplifier? Uh, yes, you must be. Are we, must are we leading that. up to another joke about someone's name? Mike? No. <laughs> far be it from me. Far, All right. be, far be it from me to say. Well, I don't think it's a funny name. So I'll let you just giggle there like an idiot in the corner. <laughs> and his name's Mr. Bones. Yes. You, you're, you are winding me up. Uh, no. His name's Mr. Bones, and he's got a dodgy acronym. Well, uh, I'm, company name. Are we suddenly back in primary school? We are. We are. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Was it so, David Brooks who said we were cheesy? Um, David Brooks. Yes. Yeah, he said we were cheesy. Mains I don't cable. know why he would think that from Mains Cable Arras. I I think I do. I can't work it so, out, David. If you're watching, you'll so. have to maybe put something in the comments to tell us why you yes. think we're cheesy. Well, hello, David. I, I don't I don't get it at all. I'm afraid. There we are. So great company, by the way. If you want. Uh, all kinds of crazy hi-fi stuff, wires and leads and interconnects. And MCRU. All kinds of things, MCRU. Yes. There, we yeah. there we are. Um, you won't think we're cheesy now, we've given them a plug. No. Gosh. Well, um, no um, pun intended. Very, very, uh, very interesting website to, to root around on. Um, and yes. um, yeah, so uh, basically you can get these things recapped and rebuilt and they, this one sounds absolutely great. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, so it should really. You, you've, you've chucked quite a lot of cash at it, um, yeah. but that's not really the point, is it? I don't think. I think you know, the the thing is, it's, this is a bit like restoring a classic car, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you could you could argue that for the same amount of money you could go buy a new car, um, that, that how much it would cost you to re restore a classic. But you know, you end up with something really yeah. quite special. I, think. I mean, I think you know, with the cost of purchasing this, admittedly, a few years ago now, and a, and a kind of recap and service. It's going to be under 500 quid total. Um, and, you know, you're going to struggle to get something that sounds as good, certainly sounds as distinct. Because, yeah, no, very true. Um, the, the, the NAD sound is, is quite special. Certainly the older, more classic era NAD sound um, is, um, is absolutely fantastic, uh, but, but not quite accurate, I'd say. I'd so, say I think that's a fair comment. Yeah. I'm, sure, I'm sure NAD aficionados won't even mind us saying that and I'm sure they, they get it but that's not the point is it I think they've always had a sort of a, a really lovely character about them um, you know it's sort of it's slightly sort of a slightly warm um, you know but but still hugely powerful yeah. transient you know doing so many things so yeah. well well it's it's a kind of it's a very expansive sound um, it's it's very gutsy in the bass it's solid in always, the bass always yeah, yeah. Um, and it's got a kind of slightly opaque but kind of Sweet sounding mid range, almost like a valve amp, I think. Not yes. quite as far, but um, you know, it's like a sort of um, slightly sort of tr more traditional style valve amp mid range and a lovely kind of sugary treble. Um, and yeah, it's kind of strange thing because it's it's um, it's got a lot of grunt and power, but it's delivered with a lot, with a lot of silkiness and, yes. and sort of smoothness. and and warmth. I agree completely and and also it's interesting so the the British amplifiers at this time yeah this sort of 
era, this sort of ilk, all uh, were very much going towards sort of large toroidal transformers. Yeah. Um, you know, which would sort of weigh a ton. They 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 sort of overwhelm the inside of the yeah. of the amplifier. And I'm thinking of sort of you know name exposure NVA. You know, people like that with these big old yeah. whacking grippy things. This isn't quite like that, is it? It's it's you know it's it's pretty hefty. But it seems to me that they concentrate on on different areas within the design yeah. of the amplifier. Do you think that's fair to say? Yeah. I mean, this one's got a pretty chunky frame type yeah. transformer. Massive heat sinks inside. There are huge heat sinks. Um, and uh, you know, there's a lot inside this. Uh, the 3130 is actually the same physical size as this, the yes. cheaper one, but yeah, yeah. much more empty. <laughs> yes, no, sure, um, sure. But, but this was yeah. the size, wasn't this? Was the form yeah. factor? Yeah. Um, it wasn't. There weren't many companies who were making non-standard sizes at yeah. that time. Yeah, absolutely. So all your boxes could yeah. fit together, but that was the essence of a separate system, wasn't yeah. it? You know, you choose what you want from a different manufacturer, yeah. and they'd all sort of slot together. Well, I think, I mean, to me, it was always um, if you went into someone's house in the in the you know, early mid eighties, they had a NAD amplifier that that just said, "You read a hi-fi magazine." Yeah, it really <laughs> did. It really did. You didn't buy your stuff from Comet, you know. No, or, uh, no. I would imagine yeah. that when when you you started your your career in um, in journalism, if you stuck a NAD on the front cover of, of a of whichever hi-fi magazine you were editing at the time, I bet that would really pump the sales up. Yeah, but it's one of those products. Yes. I think there's probably a few, aren't there? So NAD would be one. I would, I'm guessing probably Quad yep. would be another one. Lin would probably be yep. another one. But yep. certainly, you know, these guys would be sort of right up there. I'd have thought. Absolutely. So, so you know, when I was editing Hi-Fi World, if we had a new NAD, then that was that was an automatic front cover. Yes. You know, because we we people would buy it, would buy the magazine just for that. Sure. Really. Um, I Is mean, that still the case? Um, well, I, I'm I'm not I'm no longer editing a print mag, um, but um, certainly. You know that the brand is still very strong, yeah. and um, you know it's doing a lot of a lot of good stuff. But it's it is obviously the, these days a lot of NAD uh, products have moved into they're now digital mm. class D. Sorry, don't say digital class D, um, and um, you know a little bit they kind of they've kind of moved out the super specialist niche that they were in when we were all buying thirty twenty. Sure. You know? Um, just a little bit more generalist. When you, but talking about their digital products, their yeah. streamers uh, in particular seem to get yeah. really great reviews. Yeah, yeah. Um, I wouldn't say they were inexpensive, you know, yeah. like say a thirty one twenty yeah. was, but they look, I think, really tasty. Yeah, you know, they've got yeah. really nice sort of screen on them, really nice form factor. Um, they look the part. Yeah, they no, really they're, they're the very, part. they're very good so, stuff. They still are yeah. very good stuff, but they're no longer doing. A class A B amplifier with twenty watts per channel and a big no, transformer. No, no sure, um, sure. Know, they've they've kind of followed where the modern sort of hi fi market is, which yes, is yeah. um, not where it was when this was this was around. No, totally um, get it. But um, totally yeah, if you're it. into retro sort of hi fi and or and or if you like a big fruity sound from a transistor amp, um, then this is great. Um, if you're going to buy a cheap classic NAD, you might as well buy the best one, you know, which yeah. is which is not much more expensive, uh, and if you can pair it with a twenty one fifty five, the matching power amp, and use it as bridged, then that's a hell of a. That'd be stonking, of, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, I, I can't yeah. think of too many loudspeakers that wouldn't drive. Absolutely, uh, you know, I yeah. think that, that's a really yeah. key thing, isn't it? So if you yeah. had sort of a you know classic pair of eighty speakers yeah. as well, yeah. which are inherently tough to drive, yeah. then these wouldn't have any issue at all. Um, well, this drives the my NS thousands that's perfectly, mental. perfectly happily. Yeah. That's just mental. At pretty high God. volumes and doesn't sound strained. That's crazy. You know, crazy. Um, which which is unlike its competitor, the Mission Cyrus One, for example. Sorry, Cyrus Two rather. In the case of this, this is a Cyrus Two rival. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, which just sounds a bit more breathless. Uh, uh, you know, uh, yes. driving um, difficult to drive speakers at high volumes. Do you know what I'd like to hear this with? This is going to sound a little bit random, but it's only because there's, there's a, a, a person in our, who pops a comment in quite regularly saying, um, please, can you re review a pair of EPOS ES14s, which are actually I, one of my faves yeah. from that era. Yeah. I'd love to hear that with a pair of e yeah. EPOSs. The ES14s were, were cool speakers. Yeah. Um, and, and actually, to the, to the, to the, the, the question, can we review them, um, 
you don't own a pair, do you? I don't. And, and I don't own a pair either. Um, if we can get hold of a pair, I'd, yeah. I'd love to hear them again because yeah. it's been an awfully long time yeah. since uh, since I heard a pair, and, and I sort of I've got very romantic uh, memories of what they sounded like. And I'd yeah. like to hear them again. So so if we do do that, yeah. we'll have to fire them up with your nad here, absolutely. Um, and and then sort of maybe like a. I don't know a, a, a Linaxis or something or a Riga Planner three. Yeah, you know, to, and maybe also fire them up with uh, a name Nate one. Yeah, that'd so, be cool. Do you know anyone who's got one of those? Mike? Not a clue. No, okay. no, uh, no. In fact, oh, that's a point actually. Um, uh, must get my Nate serviced. Yes. By by our, our lovely our lovely chap from. Yes. Name. So so uh, there we go. So we've we've got. Uh, Lots of stuff to focus we on. We have. Find we have. a pair of ES14s. ES14s. Get your, your Nate one sorted out. Yes. Um, yeah. And, um, you know, uh, all sorts of other things. Oh, uh, actually, speak speaking, of, speaking of speakers, um, I haven't told you this. Yeah. Um, I've just acquired a pair of Sony uh, APMs. Have you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Accurate cool. pistonic motion speakers. Excellent. So there we go. So we, we'll fire those up for a riff as well at some point. Definitely. Because they're really funky, actually. Yeah. Cool. Quite revolutionary. So there you go. Um, Lovely. Vintage, uh, vintage audio guys. Um, you know, less is more. Buy the buy the expensive NAD that looks like the cheap one. Yep. Uh, for not much more money than <laughs> the cheap that. one. Yes. And, the mad uh, NAD. Yeah, the mad NAD, and get it uh, recapped if if need be, and uh, enjoy the eighties, amazing eighties vibe. Too right. And this was only nineteen eighty five to nineteen eighty seven, and so as if you're completely um, sort of. Uh, OCD about it. This is basically the last of the kind of early generation uh, uh, NAD amps. I think it's basically a kind of variation on a theme of the uh, of the thirty twenty, which right. powered the company along. You know, the last time. Starfighter. Yes, excellent, absolutely. excellent. Yeah. And what are you going to give it on a hi-fi um, riff? I'm going to give it. A th- bearing in mind, it cost you two hundred and fifty quid. Yeah. Well, I mean, in the great scheme of things, I'm going to give it eight and a half, maybe nine. Okay. Um, so it's not an absolutely, you know, life-changing amp, but it's it's one of those little curios that's much better than you think. You know, sure, sure. And, and doesn't cost very much. So. I would gladly give it a nine, yeah. simply because for for 250 quid, you buy a, a stonking great amplifier. Yes. You know, with loads of grunt, drive yeah. any speakers, and yeah. sounds terrific. So really... As they say, what is not to like? Yes. They're very good. Very Absolutely. Good. There we are. Buying advice again on Hi Fi yeah. Riff. Absolutely. Brilliant. And thank you for watching this episode of Mike and Dave's Hi Fi Riff. And we'll very much look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.